This is a Lapu Lapu Commander review. Lapu Lapu is the newest garrison in Rise of Kingdoms, and being a leadership garrison has a lot of potential and options to run with. In today's video, we'll cover his skills, talents, formations, pairings, and where I feel he'll fit in this very packed and very competitive garrison meta. Without further ado, let's get started. <music> First, let's talk about skills. Lapu Lapu has an interesting kit and a good synchronization between skills within his kit. His first skill is a 5 target AoE that deals a massive 2000 damage factor. This is a very very nice damage factor on its own, in addition to the fact that it deals an additional 300 damage factor if the main target of the skill is a rally. This is really, really huge in terms of damage output. It has a ton of potential damage output, both against multiple targets swarming up to 5, as well as 1v1 with this bonus damage factor. And would be particularly great as well against double rallies, since it's just two targets. Next, his second skill gives 20% attack, and then 10% more skill damage when attacking rallied armies. This appears to function so long as you're attacking a rally in general, meaning you will deal more skill damage to each march hit, even if they aren't the rally, so long as the primary target is in fact a rally. But some testing is needed to officially confirm this, but that is my understanding based on what I am seeing. This is great for both 1v1 against the rally, as well as against small swarmers because you're going to get the bonus damage on your skill against the swarmers. But it doesn't do as much against heavy swarming because you're only going to be hitting 5 targets with your skill damage. His third skill gives 10% defense and 10% health if you have three different unit types, as well as a 5% damage reduction in garrisons. That jumps to 10% when you're in a city, but we're not going to really talk about that that much because we're more covering the objective defense here. This isn't groundbreaking, and I would have ideally liked to see this as a 20% overall in the city or 10% damage reduction or 20% health and defense, as plenty of other commanders have similar or stronger skills like Gorgo and Hera do. So it wouldn't be unheard of and it would make the 10% defense and health less disappointing or the 5% damage reduction less disappointing. But it does add some much needed survivability to his kit as is as well. The 4 skill gives a 10% buff to all damage after you use an active skill which becomes an additional 20% when you're targeting somebody if you're the city defense. So you get 10% in an objective or 20% inside of a city. This is a garrison exclusive skill and also does stack with secondary commander skill uses because that is also an active skill. Meaning you can stack it quickly when you're swarmed as you're getting more rage and the 20% boost then you can use again when you cast your next cycle of skills quickly enough. This is made easier through garrison and skill talent trees, which will give you a ton of rage, and we'll cover that in the talent section, but is probably his strongest skill overall for garrison specifically. Finally, his expertise augments his primary skill, and it gives a little bit more damage factor on his skill. It goes from 300 to 500, as well as the fact that it adds a disarm effect when you're used in the city. This is not huge for objective defense, but you kind of need all your other skills for objective defense, so you're going to be having this for default. But it is an interesting concept for city defenses. It's also worth noting that this 10% skill damage taken reduction in cities is given on your skill use as well, when you're only when you're in the cities and not when you're objective defense. Overall, this kit is very solid for high damage output in objective defense. It has crazy sustain and burst damage potential when you have the skill tree as well. But I do have some concerns about his survivability outside of a city defense, since he doesn't have a ton to help himself stay alive against heavier attacks when you're not using him in the city. Because most of his skills are either boosted by city to give him more tankiness, or require him to be in a city defense to be tankier. But some of that can also be mitigated by commander choice when you pick his pair for a defense. Next, 
let's talk talents. Lapu Lapu is a garrison leadership skill commander, which is a actually unique combination of talents that hasn't really been seen before. This opens up some unique options for you to try, which we'll go over here. And each combination has a different set of pros and cons, and a different set of situations which it is best. But given the talent combinations, we can narrow down most of the must-haves for your talents. Going over here, we'll jump to my Yan tree, which has the garrison and skill trees, which we'll talk about first. For the garrison and the skill trees, at a minimum, you want to have these talent sets I'm showing here. As you get a lot of value with Rejuvenate, you get a lot of value with Clarity. These three talents are absolute must-haves for every garrison defense. And the key is basically to get every mainline skill all the way up to the keystone talent for the skill tree at a very minimum. This will give you a ton of rage generation, good survivability, and great overall versatility. The overall cost to do just this is a total of 45 talent points, which is a little over half of the 74 total points you can use. From there, you have a few options. If you want to invest 55 points in these two trees, you can fully level Feral Nature, which will give you a ton of extra rage generation, and that will help you get more skills off. I lean towards this because you get that three seconds of damage boost more often, and you can overlap them a lot more frequently and a lot more consistently. Having more chances to use your active skill will only help. And you'll only have more consistent uptime with more rage gain. Which this is a great way to do that. Especially when you're being swarmed or targeted. Pair that with the weak leadership talents you have overall. And it makes a pretty clear case to what you could do. This would leave 19 points you can still invest in leadership or garrison. Which could be invested similarly to how I have Hera set up here. Note that what you're seeing on the screen now is 26 investment points. So if you do the full 55 into the skill tree and the garrison tree, you'll have to take seven points away. That sounds like it's a big deal, but it really is not. I would do it by taking the three talent points out of Hidden Wrath, which is a little bit of rage loss, but versus the hundred rage you're getting with the skill tree is not nearly as significant. And then the other thing I would do is take the three ranks out of Arm to the Teeth and one rank out of the All Unit Defense here. While it would sting to lose a little bit of the 3% more damage, gaining 100 Rage is a lot more significant for your damage factor versus a 3% damage boost. And then the half a percent defense is not very significant. Because alternatively, you would have to sacrifice the 3% less damage taken. And Lapu Lapu can really use as much damage reduction as possible because his fragility is really, really apparent in objective defense. Alternatively, if you do not want to go with the Keystone Leadership, uh, this Keystone Skill Tree talent, you'll have 29 talents points to spend on this tree, which means you can invest in everything that's shown here as well as three more ranks. If you were to do three more ranks, I would recommend doing Steely Soul. Because the 1.5% normal damage would help boost his ability to resist Swarm. And you can invest your 3 ranks that way and not have to worry about being in between talents. However, I feel like you're losing more by giving up the Rage than just maxing out the skill tree and just using your already naturally high skill damage to carry the day. And as the only Leadership Garrison skill commander, there's really an opportunity here to make the most use of this. And it gives some potential for him to actually be a primary, whereas most of the time your leadership commanders are going to be secondaries. And in some cases, Lapu Lapu will be a secondary, and this will be a moot point. But I think it's well worth the investment to max out the skill tree for him, because the value is just too strong. Now, let's talk about armaments. Generally, you'll want an armament that fits your pairing, but as a standalone, if you're just considering what Lapu Lapu can do, he makes the best use of the wedge formation. With armament inscriptions that boost rage and skill damage on the specialties for wedge formation, when you get the 5% boost of skill damage, and then you get the 2% AoE boost in those damage, you get 5% boost of skill damage and a 30% chance to increase damage by 10%. You get the 3.5% normal attack damage resistance, 
which is okay. And then at 80% rage, you deal 8% more skill damage for three seconds, which you can then include on the 10% you're getting after the cast. And when you're getting swarmed, you're going to get a lot of this uptime. And then a 10% boost to skill damage dealt in general is also very solid. And this just further leans into his damage heavy kit to make him better both 1v1 and against light to medium swarming. However, for those who are looking for a more tanky commander or looking to pair with a shielding commander, Hollow Square can be used with Gorgo or Hera because of the specialty armaments here that give a nice boost to shields as well as skill damage resistance. Again, uh, strength of shields and 10% less skill damage when shielded. Strength of shields and 3% less damage when shielded or 2% if they're not and a damage resistance of 5%. You get good shield boosts for Gorgon Hera, good damage resistances that are great for both, and overall it's a great value option if you're using a shield commander or a commander who can really use the damage resistance. Due to the skill damage boosts, you want to actually use, if you're using Wedge Formation or Hollow Square Formation, since he already has skill damage boosts, you want to try to focus on armament stats that boost damage dealt, if possible, or things that would be generally good at reducing damage taken, or increasing any sort of all unit stats if possible, with a secondary focus on health or defense if you are building him to run with a specific troop type. So if you're building him to be a cavalry mixed unit, you want to stack as much cavalry health and defense outside of damage boosts. Due to the skill damage boost he already has, attack is a lower priority stat that you can avoid when possible, especially if you could stack just straight damage dealt. And due to him being a leadership commander, all unit stats that boost all the stats versus just one specific unit type are best since they will affect more percentage of his mixed unit. In the case that you have a mixed garrison with a primary main troop type, Again, as I said, you're going to want to pick armaments that prioritize that unit's de health first, then defense after you stack damage. But you still want to focus on damage first, even for these garrisons. Now, let's talk about pairings. As a leadership commander, Lapu Lapu pairs well with most garrisons, but particularly those who don't have a requirement to be a single unit type since you will lose a little bit of stats if you have a single unit type. That being said, unlike many other leadership garrisons, having only one unit type would only defeat the first half of one of his skills, so you would lose out on 10% defense and 10% health, but every other skill would stay in effect so long as you're still in a garrison. So this means that other skill bonuses from passives that, would, that you would need for single unit types can still be used and you just lose 10% health and 10% defense. So for example, Gorgo giving a ton of health to infantry, you could then use a pure infantry with Lapu Lapu and you would only lose out on 10% defense and 10% health between the two units pairings, as well as the fact that you'd be able to utilize something like Hold the Line, which gives a huge 20% less damage taken on a 10% chance which can have a 60% uptime, a little more than that, when you are being swarmed due to the fact that it is all basic attacks that you're hit by. Similarly, Dido requires all archers to be able to utilize her 10% less normal attack damage taken, so then you could run all archers with Lapu Lapu. You lose 10% defense and health from Lapu Lapu, but you get every other skill bonus, as well as the fact that you get her 10% less normal damage taken, which is super useful. Uh, Jan is a good mixed pairing for Lapu Lapu since he has good survivability, good talent flexibility for multiple units, and good skill flexibility for multiple units, as he just generally can take a little more mixed units than certain, some other commanders, such as a lot of the infantry commanders that are dependent on hold the line, whereas the talent value you get with Jan is very much on general stats over cavalry specific stats. So you get more value on top of the fact that you get less normal damage here and you get a little bit of boost to health here, but you get a lot of normal damage boosts and a lot of passive boosts that don't necessarily need cavalry only. 
although you still want to have a majority, you get good value. And you can then make some great flexibility with that. Um, you could also run Dido, and you could also run Gorgo is mixed with Lapu Lapu. But it's more of a preferential thing at this point, and I would honestly recommend you keeping them both monotype due to the fact that the 10% normal attack damage taken reduction by Dido is more significant than 10% attack or 10% defense and 10% health. And similarly, the hold the line 20% damage reduction is better than 10% health and 10% defense. Uh, if you want to go with a fully mixed garrison with a leadership set of gear, I highly recommend looking into Hera and Lapu Lapu. In the case that you do this, you want to run Lapu Lapu primary because you get the skill tree, and you can get a lot more value. And really, Hera's only weakness is his generally terrible talent selection. You get a double nasty AoE that also doubles up with the shield to help resist swarm. You also get a lot of value with your health here. You get normal attack damage reduction here. And you could just generally get a ton of value. Because if you can run three troop types here, you get what is essentially 30% normal attack damage reduction. On top of all the other shields, health, and tankiness that Hera provides. You can really double dip and reinforce really Lapu Lapu's only weakness. So you get the great damage output of Lapu Lapu with a 20% skill damage boost, as well as great survivability to keep him alive. And it could be a huge nightmare, especially in tight spaces and at things like passes where the enemy cannot use numbers to overwhelm you. The only real envisioned downside is having to build leadership equipment to truly use this effectively. But if you can run leadership gear with this, and you can fill with whatever troops you like, you really should have theoretically the same results each time if you're using leadership gear, no matter what the fill is, so long as the quality of the troops is the same. Giving a ton of unit flexibility, and for sustained fighting, it ensures you don't run your kingdom out of a specific unit type, especially if you are a smaller kingdom. This could be a huge deal as long as you're willing to deal with the increased cost of getting leadership equipment and building and expertising them for leadership commanders. Because this, these two pairings together would make a great tanky and very hard to deal with pairing. Because Hera YSS was already really solid. So if you take that and you dial the damage up, it can really put the pressure on enemy rallies. And there's no way to definitively counter it. Whereas Gorgo can get countered by archers, Jan gets countered by infantry, a leadership garrison has to just be countered by outright out damaging it. And that's going to be really hard to do against Lapu Lapu. Lastly, let's just talk about how he's going to fit in the meta. The only real concern with the meta I have for Lapu Lapu is that he has weaker survivability issues, as well as low passive stats versus other leadership meta commanders. Versus Hera, you have Lapu Lapu who has... 20% attack, 10% defense and health, and a 10% skill damage to rallies that can be 10% more after every skill use, and just a 5% damage reduction when you're using him in an objective defense. Meanwhile, you have Hera, who has 15% attack, but 15% defense instead of 10%, and 30% health instead of 10%, alongside a flat 20% perpetual skill damage and a 10% normal attack damage reduction outside of cities that can also become a 30% when you're using three troop types, plus a counterattack and shield passive proc on top of all that. This does make me concerned about his survivability since passively he's outscaled at a base level. However, the trade-off here is that he has a much higher skill damage factor as well as that stacking skill damage buff that helps both him and his allied secondary pair. This leads me to believe that his primary role is going to be just raw damage output. While he might not be as swarm resistant, he is going to put out a ton of damage one versus one. And his best areas are going to be where you can take big troop counts like forts and passes and areas where you can control the field or, can, or prevent the enemy from really reinforcing the rally or swarming the defense. And that's where passes would be also a very great option. 
And that's really, I think, where he's going to shine the most is passes because you get larger troop counts and a limited number of enemy swarmers. These areas will make him shine with sheer damage output while preventing heavier swarm, at least in most cases. However, in the swarm heavy meta, you may see him paired with a tankier commander to help mitigate the effect of swarms in smaller buildings such as flags, as well as in forts where you do not control the field. I do believe he'll do well against double rallies for the fact that he will have the bonus damage factor on his primary and get the 10% boost to hit both of them. And the fact that a double rally will likely not be met with as much swarm because the double rally is going to be the primary source of damage. You get very minimal loss of damage factor on the 15% reduction and you get a good value in that. As such, I think Lapu Lapu's best friend is going to be a good field presence that he can stand to benefit most or close to the most from a solid field presence among all garrison commanders. And pretty much if you can keep heavy swarmers off of him, as well as heavy reinforcements from sustaining the fight for longer, his insane damage output can easily turn the tide of a fight. Overall, I don't believe he's going to replace any commander wholly, but he will be an interesting side option as like a 1B to a 1A to certain meta garrison commanders and to specialize for just raw damage output. Much like Herman has been for Boudicca, with a very similar role and intent, but a different means of accomplishing that goal. But with that, we'll conclude our discussion on Lapu Lapu. As I mentioned, I believe he'll hold an interesting spot in the meta, and I'm excited to see where he will land officially as the dust begins to settle. With his high damage kit, there's great potential when paired with a good commander. With solid counterplay as well, and a general vulnerability to swarm gives a good option that benefits the meta without wholly breaking it or shifting it entirely at a glance. But let me know what you think. Do you think he's going to break the game into a whole new niche? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see a specific topic, commander, or concept covered in a future short or long format video, let me know down there as well, as your suggestions can often become future video topics. You can also suggest content in the Discord, which will have the link in the description below. But as always, good luck, fight well, and I will see you on the battlefield.